My name is Andres, Baking Steel Test Kitchen. We're gonna use the Baking Steel Plus today, which is a Baking Steel, the original, if you have the original, or any of our Baking Steels, this works. But what we like about um, what we're gonna do today is that oftentimes I get asked to make pizza for my family, or my, my son comes over and friends, and I gotta scramble to make a, bu a bunch of pizzas. So, by the way, where's that um, cutting board? Is that down here? Um, oh, I got buried. Um, so what I do is I have to make a big pizza. And I got to make several pizzas. So what we thought when we have this massive baking steel plus, which is 15 by 20, I can make one massive pizza, almost like a sheet tray pizza. And this takes us back to like the fig days, but making really, because the, the steel is 20 inches wide. You can see inside the oven here. And it takes up a lot of the, um, a lot of the shelf. But what it does secretly allows me to not to make big pizzas. So we're going to do that one today. I thought it would be fun to do a hangout and make a large pizza. So the plan is I'm going to make this pizza. And then what we'll do is um, afterwards we'll get to some Q&A. But first I'll just walk you through all the steps of what I do on Friday night to make amazing pizza at home. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to layer some cool flavors on here. Um, so let's get to it. This is going to be fun. So the dough is our 72-hour dough, but this one is massive. This is a 500-gram dough ball, OK? I just place this down. And that's big. It's about the size of two of our pizzas. Um, I balled this up at like 6 o'clock this morning. So it's been resting at room temperature for you know uh, a good four hours almost five hours. So that's just enough time. Uh, flour up, really get this thing coated with flour. Because it's so big, I don't want this thing to stick to my table. So I just literally be, be aggressive. And now what I'm going to do is just press out. And now this is a bigger pizza, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging than, say, um, a traditional pizza. And I'm using our massive new peel. So I'm going to flour that up as well. I'll put that aside. And now for my dough, I'm just going to pre Oh, man. Can you see that? Can you see these like bubbles in this thing? Is this cutting board in your way? A little bit? No. Do you guys see this? Incredible like fermentation going on here. And softness, it's very, very big. And now I'm just going to literally stretch this thing. And I'm going to try to make it more rectangle than round. And how I do that, I don't really know. I just uh, kind of work on the edges and give it a little, but you can see like, oh, I got a little hole going on. Cool, right? Ooh, it's a big hole. We'll, we'll show you how to fix that, which is great. Ooh, it's a really big hole. Look at that. That's going to do is shrink my pizza a little bit, because I didn't let this thing, I didn't ball it up right. But any, here's what we're going to do, is I'm going to kind of pinch it over. Can you see what I'm doing? Pinch it over, right, to make sure that that hole, because if I don't patch that hole up, I'm going to have a sauce issue and a stuck pet peel issue. And any idea why I got that hole, Chef? Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. I balled up two balls of dough earlier. Probably just needed to rest a little bit longer just to kind of, but it's okay. It's going to work perfectly, or I just kind of stretched it too much. But you can see I'm, I'm nervous to pick this thing up now because I want another hole, but I can still stretch it, right, patiently. Just cover up any holes. Boom. Now I've got this massive rectangle, right? It's probably, let's see how big it is. This cutting board is 20 inches wide. This dough would be about probably like 18. But I know my peel is the same size as my steel, so I'm not really worried about um, making this too big for my oven. So when I get this thing pressed out, and it shrunk a little bit because of my holes, but again, I need to make sure those holes are um, sewn up, if you will, because otherwise this dough is not going to be able to slide once I put my sauce on. Okay? So boom. Boom. 
our sauce is going to be, actually, I'm going to show you something a little different. So in our fig days, we would take this and we would add a little flavor on the crust itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of oil here and some garlic, chopped fresh garlic, right? I'm going to take a little salt, right? A little bit of salt. Take my spoon. Let me kind of wipe this off here quick. Just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm painting my, my canvas here. Take my spoon and kind of just help spread this garlic and oil all over the, the bottom of the crust. I might add a little bit more garlic here. A little bit more oil. And what this is going to do is add that little layer of flavor underneath the sauce. It kind of sneaks up on you and you kind of take a bite into it. And we used to do this for every style pizza that we made. Uh, and that would do is, whether it was tomato sauce on top, you name it. Now, next one I'm going to do is take my sauce, which is crushed tomatoes and sea salt. Less is more. So I'm going to go really light layer. And now because this pizza is so big, I want to be careful with my launch. I want to make sure it's still loose on here. Before I do my cheese and make it even heavier, I want to continue to give it a, a little push to make sure it's going to slide. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to have a problem. And if it does get stuck in a, in a certain area, I'll just stick some flour underneath it. Again, before I do my cheese, I want to just continue to shake this thing so it definitely slides. And for my cheese, I'm going to use, I've been doing this a lot lately, is it the provolone? Just some slices of provolone, which is a really nice cheese. Maybe three or four slices, not a lot, right, Chef? What do you guys think? And now I'm going to take some fontina. I'm going to shred it up. Again, less is more. I want to be careful because I'm adding a lot of different um, cheeses on top. Some palm reggiano, again. It looks amazing. And now I'm going to take some whole milk. This is a Maple Brook Farm product from Vermont. It's a fresh mozzarella. And we like to buy our mozzarella kind of in these plastic wraps because it's a little bit more dry. And just break off the small pieces. Now I'm almost getting ready to launch, and I've been preheating my baking steel for about an hour. I'm going to switch it over to broil. So when I go into the oven, this steel is going to, oh, the broiler in the oven will be on. So before I even do that, I'm going to give it a shake again. See how it's still, it's still loose on here. I'm confident I can get it in, and I might just add a little bit more sauce. Not a ton, just a little bit. What do you think, Chef? Look good? What do you guys think about basil? Maybe do basil at the end? All right. Now I'm going to go into the oven. My broiler is on, and it's going to be kicking in in just about a minute. So by the time this gets in the oven, that broiler is beaming down on that hot baking steel. So before I go in, take a deep breath. Make this thing, make sure it still shakes. It does. And this is going to be tapered off, this peel, so it slides off really easy. Now I'm going to open my oven up, pull my rack out, take this, and just slide it on. Boom. Close her up. Boom. Grab the timer. Because the, the board on it, it's just coming on now. I put my timer on for two minutes. Um, after two minutes, I can open the oven up and um, maybe rotate the pizza, turn the broiler off, and let this thing finish for two more minutes. It'll be about a four-minute pizza. And this is how we do all of our pizzas, by the way. Um, and that's it. Um, that's two minutes. I want to first go back into the oven now and maybe spin this thing around one time. So it's been two minutes. Look at those bubbles, Jeff. Isn't that amazing? 
and I'm gonna turn the broiler off, but first I'm just gonna kind of rotate this so it doesn't get too dark. Put my oven back on 500. And put my timer back on for two more minutes. Because recognize that the steel is awesome, but the back of the oven is going to be a little hotter than the front of the oven. Just because of, you, know, you open those doors, close them enough, some of that heat escapes. It doesn't escape as much from the back. So rotate is good. So that's been four minutes. Let's take a peek. Oh, yeah. Underneath, gorgeous, right? Oh, it looks amazing. Let's remove this out. Slides off right onto my peel. Boom. Oh, man. You see that? That oil from that cheese looks incredible. Now my favorite part. Let's finish this thing off. That looks, can you guys see this? Sorry. Can you guys see this? Look at that, huh? Isn't that pretty? And underneath is cooked beautifully. It looks, oh my gosh, it smells amazing. I'm going to finish this off with a little bit of basil. Look at that shape. It's shaped nice. Yeah, that's cool. Um, just break off some basil, put it on top. Shiny side down. Pro trick. Pro Always put the shiny side up. I'm kidding. And now, what I might take, I can smell the garlic too, like the hot garlic, the heat, right? Secret weapon, some palm reg at the end. It's kind of grate a little bit on there. Again, we've just layered in some incredible flavor into this five day dough, five day, 500 gram dough. Is that enough? Who's coming over to have some? Anybody? Slice this up, and now I can feed, you know, again, this is the size of two pizzas, which is nice, dough-wise anyway. Um, massive, massive and delicious. 